Hey everyone, and welcome to Wit Code. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you about inheritance in Python 3. So inheritance allows us to define a class that inherits all the methods and properties from another class. For example, let's say we have a person class and a student class. A student is a person. In other words, a person has a name and so does a student. A person has an age and so does a student. So we should make it so our student class inherits from our person class. And what is the point of this, you may ask? Well, the main purpose of this is to avoid redundancy, or in other words, don't repeat yourself. For example, let's create a class called person and give them the attributes age and name. We can also print the constructor to show where we are. Then let's create a class called student and give them the properties name, student ID, GPA, and age. What you should notice is that we have two overlapping properties, name and age, as a student is a person. In other words, both a student and a person has a name and an age. So you can see we have these two properties here, name and age, which are present in both of these. In fact, inheritance is called an is a relationship. For example, a student is a person, an athlete is a person. You could mix it up and say something like an apple is a fruit. And the way to show this relationship, relationship in Python is the following way. So you do in parentheses here, person. So the class in the parentheses is the superclass, or person, and the class outside the parentheses is the student, or the subclass. And the superclass is the class whose properties and methods are being inherited, and the subclass is the class who is inheriting the properties and methods. And basically, this line here is saying that a student is a person. And so, if you remember, one of the biggest reasons for inheritance is to reduce redundancy. Therefore, because we share attributes in the student and person class, in other words, both name and age, we can remove them from the student class and just pass them to the super class. So you can see both these have name and age. So we can just remove them from here as we would be inheriting them from the super class person. However, to do this, we need to communicate with our super class or person class. And this can be done through the keyword super. The super keyword returns a proxy object, or a temporary object, of the superclass that allows us to access the methods of the superclass. The method we want to access here is the constructor, or init. And then we can pass our name and age from the student class, or subclass, to our parent class, or superclass. So we use the super word, super keyword here, to reference our superclass, which is person here. And then the method or, that we want to interact with, or use, is name and age. So now, when someone creates a new student object, we will pass the name and age in to the super initializer, which is right here. So name and age will get passed to person because we listed person right here. Now we can access our attributes in the super class as if they're part of the subclass. In other words, all instances of the subclass can be treated exactly like instances of the super class. So let's create an instance of our student class and access each attribute. So now when we run this here, you can see printed below that we get printed the student's name up here, which is wit code, and their age, which is 25, even though we aren't explicitly setting them within our student class. Instead, we are passing them to the superclass person here. They're getting put up here, passed into self.name and age, and then we can access them from the instance of our subclass, just like this. So this is essentially the equivalent of this and this, but instead we're passing to our superclass up here because these are shared properties and there's no need to say them again. And now remember, not only can we access attributes on the superclass, but we can also access methods. So let's create a method called my name is in our parent class. We can then use this method from our object of the student class. So we created an instance here of this. Because we are inheriting from the superclass by specifying it here, we can also use this method. And it is the same way. We would just do student dot my name is like this, and we will print self dot name. So let's run this. And you can see we have my name is wit code. Also, because the super keyword returns a temporary object of the superclass, we can not only access the constructor, but also any other method we make. So again, we can call this from our base class or student class using the super keyword. So we can call this method here. So we can do super dot my name is, and it should print again. So 
let's get rid of this. Let's run this and see the result. So you can see we have my name is wit code, which is printed right after the person constructor because we initialize this here or call the initialize here. It goes through all this, does person constructor, and then we're calling this method here using the super keyword. However, it should be noted that if you want to access the attributes of the super class within the class definition, you should use not use the super keyword. For example, this will throw an error. Say we do print super dot name, this will throw an error and will not work. Instead, we should just use the self keyword. So we would do print self dot name. Let's run this. And you can see we have print name wit code right here. And now, I also want to go over multiple inheritance. In other words, having multiple super classes. For example, a student is a person, but we can also say a student is an athlete or a student athlete. So then, let's create an athlete class. An attribute that a student and an athlete could have in common or share could be maybe they both have a teacher or a coach. So I'm going to make this class right here. And now, if we want to inherit the attributes and methods from the athlete class, we add a comma after person and then add athlete. So to inherit from multiple classes, what we would do is here, comma, athlete. And now we're inheriting from both the athlete superclass and the person superclass. So now we can say a student is a person and a student is an athlete. And so what we could do now is add the variable teacher to our argument list in our constructor for student and then pass this value to the athlete class. However, you may have noticed something here. Remember how the super keyword calls to our super class? Well, now that we have two super classes, it becomes a bit more complicated. For example, how would we know what super class constructor we're talking with now? So for example, this will cause an error, even if the arguments are of two different lengths. So if we went in here, it's super dot init and passed in teacher, you'd think maybe it would know because this is one argument and this is two that we're referring to this superclass here. And this one here, where there's two, is referring to this superclass here. Well, this is not the case. The way around this is instead of using the keyword super, you can explicitly call the superclass by name. However, this time, you need to pass in self each time you do this. So for example, right here, we could do person dot underscore in it, in it, and then we have to press self and then name and age like this. And that will replace this. And then for this one, for the athlete class, we can do athlete dot in it self and then teacher like this. And now we shouldn't get any errors. But what if we need to not just use the constructor, but a method that has the same name? For example, if we give athlete the same method as person, my name is, and we want to call it from our, within our student class, how would we know which one we're talking to? So let's create a method here. Def my name is. Now, how do we know if we are calling this method? Are we calling it from our athlete class or our person class? Of course, if we want to do this from within our constructor, we would just have to do athlete dot my name is pass in self, and let's press play here, and we can see my name is Professor Whitcode. That makes sense. But what if we want to do it here? Say we want to do student dot my name is here. How will we know which one we'll choose? Will it call it from athlete or from person? Let's find out. And so you can see it says my name is Whitcode. So it is calling it from the person class. Because if it was calling it from the athlete class, it would say my name is Professor Whitcode. For this, we need to be aware of something called method resolution order. Method resolution order is what decides where Python will look for a given method and which method will be called when there's a conflict. The conflict here is that we are inheriting from two classes, or we have two superclasses and both have a method with the same name. If two of the parent classes have a method with the same name, then multiple resolution order comes into play. Here, the my name is method is called from the person class because it is listed first as our super class. If we were to switch the order, then the athlete class my name is method would be called instead. So let's test that out. So let's switch here, athlete, comma person, and we still have this method being called here. Let's run this and see what it looks like. And now you can see it says my name is Professor Whitcode. And then say we reverse these changes, run it again, you can see my name is Whitcode. So the order here, or the way the method resolution works here, is whichever superclass is listed first. And now, the last thing I wanted to show you is multi-level inheritance. 
What I just showed you is multiple inheritance, or inheriting from multiple classes directly. Multi-level inheritance is best explained with an example. Say you have a child class and a parent class. If that parent class of that child class also has a parent class, then that child class will automatically inherit its parent's parent class attributes. So you could call it the child class's grandparent class. So let's show you that here. And now you can almost see a hierarchy. So we have here, the first one, the superclass of the student now is just athlete. And then the superclass of athlete is person. So what we were doing is we were calling the constructor for athlete here, for student, it's superclass. And you can see it takes teacher, name, and age. We are passing those in. And then what this is doing is it's taking name and age and passing it to its superclass, which is person. And you can see this one just takes name and age. So here we're passing name and age. And then when we're actually creating an instance, of course, of student, we're still passing in name, age, student ID, GPA, and teacher. These will just find their way all up to athlete, and then from athlete up to person in a hierarchical fashion. And then everything, though, should still work the same. So if we press play, you can see everything is still working. We're just doing it a different way. We're inheriting from, from super classes in a multi-level way. So this is my video on inheritance in Python 3. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. But for now, thank you for watching.